What's up guys, this is Luke and uh, this is a computer builder's tutorial. I'll show you how to put a, a computer together. And so I just wanted to introduce these parts here that we have. We'll be putting in Core i7 system together today. So we've got our i7 motherboard with X50i chipset. It's the Gigabyte one. It's a UD3R. Um, so like I said, we'll be putting in uh, the Core i7. We have the i930 here, which we'll be replacing with the Core i7-920. And I got this locally at a very good price at Micro Center. Also, we have our video card here. It's the 5850 from MSI, from ATI. And it's one of the new ones. Um, you know, these are currently one of the single fastest video cards on the market uh, for a single video card. Also, we'll be putting our after cooler, aftermarket cooler on our CPU because we plan on overclocking. I will show you how to do some of that later. Um, we'll be overclocking the i7. I'll be putting our V8 Cooler Master cooler on it. And we'll be putting the thermal paste on there and everything. I'll show you guys how that's done. Next, we have some basic things like the hard drive and the CD DVD ROM. Um, lastly, I wanted to show you guys some tools that you might need here. And, you know, it's real basic. You got your Phillips screwdriver and your regular screwdriver. And then you have some of this compressed air, which is real nice to have. They sell it pretty much anywhere. And it's just a nice thing to have when you're building one of these. Alright, what's up guys? It's Luke here. Um, I wanted to show you our case that we have here. It's a mid tower from Cool Master. It's the HAF922, and I'll be showing you some of the basic uh, things here that we have and what goes where. So I'm gonna uncover this side here and uh, basic layout. You know, pretty much all cases are layout the the same way. Um, here we have our 522. 525 base for you know your CD and DVD ROMs under the under here we've got our hard drive base which you can fit um, your hard drives in and you know here is the motherboard plate and you've got your you know fans and everything this is the front intake fan and this is the the outtake so you know the airflow goes from front to back so it's always nice to have a good case um, this is a very good one um, for air cooling you know and if you want it to go water cooling also it might be a tight fit because this is only a mid case but you know it can be done um, you've got you know on the back here you've got your holes here so this is water cooling ready um, here these things here are we'll be uncovering those when we put our video card in there I will show you guys later the power supply unit actually goes on the bottom on these cases here which I think is better because when you put it on the bottom you don't have the wires going all over and I'll show you how to do some of uh, cable management later as well okay so without further ado let's actually put our motherboard in and I'll show you how that's done okay. hey what's up guys so we're ready to put our CPU in right now Number one thing that you need to remember though, when you're doing anything with the motherboard and when you're touching it, make sure you're grounded. Um, also, it's good good to have, if you have carpets in your house, um, make sure you don't have, you know, socks on and you're on the carpet and then you don't just touch the motherboard because it might uh, short circuit it. If you, if you touch it, the static electricity might just short circuited so what I do is I just touch the side of uh, the case here to ground myself and then I'm good to go so what I'll do is I'll actually pull the latch up 
you know this is already pulled up this safety cover was in there we just removed that and it will come up this whole thing this whole socket will come up like that and you know this is our socket here the LGA 1366 which seats the i7 okay so we take our processor out of the casing here and this is real simple all you need to do is line up this arrow that's on here you need to line that up with the arrow that's down on the socket you can't you can barely see it right now but it's there so make sure you guys line that up and we just put it in here like so you know it just seats itself basically um, so that's good um, right now all you do is you latch it down so it locks up and now you put this down like so what we'll do now is we'll put our thermal paste on there and then we'll put the V8 on here our cooler okay so that's coming up alright guys so now we're putting our CPU cooler on our CPU so first we applied our thermal paste that came with the CPU cooler it looks like this um, what do you want to do is do a real thin layer in there um, I use the credit card uh, I use the you know just the card you can use any kind of card and what do you do is you do little dabs on the side and you just spread it out but make sure you don't do too much and you don't do too little you have to find you know the sweet spot but you don't want to do a lot that's a common misconception if people think that if they put more it's better cooling it's not okay so now this is kind of painful with this cooler but I'll try to do it as best as I can we have our brackets here for the socket and we'll just put them in put the cooler in right now match these brackets up okay now what we have to do is install the back plate on there so we'll pick up the motherboard and our bracket that goes on the, the bottom here going like this now we have these actually these will go on there oh well, these will not go on there screw these on <clears throat> Come on, baby. See, um, you're gonna have different insulation if you do different cooler. Obviously, this one. Some of them are easier to install. This one is about medium. Okay, I'm just gonna pause this right now. Come back when this is installed. Alright, so I finally got this installed on there. As good as it is. <clears throat> Flip this back over. You know, grab myself. Um, and then, right now we'll be putting our memory modules in. So I've got three sticks. They're each two gigs. Um, these are the DDR600s, 1600s, and we'll be overclocking our processor so I'll show you how to how to do the memory and everything as well right now we'll just put them in you want to put them in these sockets right next to your uh, CPU to the right of it and basically you see there's different colors different motherboards will have this you know set up a little different but we want to do a triple channel setup um, so we'll put you have to match the colors you can't just put you know blue white and blue you go you just match the colors um, so you just look at how the pins are set up I'm actually gonna put them in the white one because our CPU cooler is a bit large all you do is you set them in and you push push down on it and they'll click into their spot okay so I'll do 
these here. To unlatch this. Click them in. So first we did our CPU. Doesn't really matter which in which order you do this. Um, but I like to do my CPU first. Then I install my memories. <clears throat> then we put this in the case and we'll hook it up to the power supply all the cables and everything okay so we'll come back when we do that okay so we have our case back up here once we put on the cooler and the memory and everything now what you need is with, with your case you will get a toolkit or some kind of you know things that they will include these screws and these like bolts or whatever and you just put them in these holes depending on your motherboard size this case support a micro ATX and a regular ATX motherboard that's what we have um, so you put these on here and on these the motherboard will be seated so I already put all the other ones in I'm just gonna show you guys just put the last one in here and now we're gonna seat the motherboard so I'll take one, ground myself on the case, grab the motherboard, and seat it in. You want to seat it so the memory modules, when you're facing it this way, memory modules will be on the right side, and the video, the PCI slots, the video card slots will be on the bottom. Okay, so basically you just want to set it on here, line it up with the screws, See the motherboard will have holes in here, and that's what we're gonna screw in there. So I'm just gonna line it up with the brackets, like so. Um, and now in the toolkit, so you have all kinds of screws that we'll be putting in there right now. So we'll be back when we screw it all in. What up, guys? So. Right now I want you to see that what we got in here, okay? We put in our Antec power supply, you know, this is 850 watts. It's... I'm going to tell you one thing here. When you're looking for a power supply, it'll tell you your 850 watt, that's, that's the output for the watts. Everyone, you know, everyone always says, the more watts you got, you know, the, the better it is. Not true at all. Okay, what do you want to look at when you're buying a power supply, man? You want to look at these 12 volt rails, okay? This particular one has four of them. And you want to look at the amper rating on each of those and add that up. So let's say 25, 25, 25, and 25 on each rail. That's 100 amps total combined. Which means, you know, the more amps, the better it is. Now this one right here from the Antec, it's, this is like a good power supply, okay? You're not... There is like certain brands that I would recommend, you know, Antec, PC, Power and Cooling, Enermax, you know, some of those. And I'll post those on the blog too, um, you know, the recommended good brands. But this is what you want to look for, is the 12 volt amper ratings, okay. The watt output, yeah, you want to look at that as well, but it's not as important as these ratings. So that's like a little gimmick that, you know, the, the retailers will tell you. And, uh... What? Yeah. Also, oh yes, good thinking. You want to make sure that, well, you don't have to buy a modular power supply. Modular basically means, come around with the camera down here, back here. Modular means that it won't come with big cluster of cables, okay? If you have a non-modular power supply, all the cables that you will connect here will come with it already and you don't connect them they will just come so you're gonna have problems with cable management you know and then you're gonna have cables all in your case more cables you know the worse airflow and you know then you're gonna have higher temperatures you don't want that 